Hey guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com, and I am really excited to have you guys joining me today. We have, I have some interesting things to share with you, but we have some really good topics. One is how I treated anaphylaxis without going to the ER, which is really important information. And I want to talk about the correlation between that and silicone poisoning and breast implant illness. But before I do that, I am going to spin this around here. Good morning, Tammy. I'm going to spin this around here. I'm spinning me around here, and then I'm going to spin this around. This is the other side of my home that was completely just studded out and insulation that the mountain man and mountain man junior worked on that and got that all in place and I thought I would share that doesn't that look awesome I'm so excited everything's starting to really come around so I'm gonna plop back down here before I make you all sick from my spinning and sit down here by the wood stove. I was out on the trap line this morning, hence the nice wooly around my neck, and sitting by the wood stove. I was on the trap line with the mountain man this morning, and uh, it was a little chilly. We had snow and wind and stuff during the night, and it was actually not too bad temperature-wise this morning, um, but it was nice to be out. So I'm warming up here by the wood stove, and, um, Praying for you guys, Tammy. I hope things are going well for you guys. And thank you. Yes, I like it too. It just makes it, oh, it just is starting to really take shape in here. Between that wall and the other walls that we've completed, it's just really starting to get cozy. So, some of you that follow me on Facebook know that I've had a crazy last couple days. Um, before I go into that, I just thought of something I wanted to share. Yesterday was the Mountain Boys, who is now Mountain Man Junior, uh, birthday. He is 22, and he and I did some baking and cooking yesterday. My gas stove in the kitchen, the thermostat went on it, so I cannot use my oven. So I have been uh, cooking either on the wood stove or on the stove top. And uh, yesterday we baked a cake and two loaves of bread, and he made nachos out on the gas grill. So uh, we've been uh, kicking things around and doing things a little um, non-traditionally. But uh, we had the elk roast on the wood stove yesterday and made a big, massive vat of mashed potatoes for the mountain boy. That's his food group, potatoes. And uh, as long as the boy has potatoes, he could survive anything. So... <laughs> Tammy says, thank you for the prayers. Father-in-law is hanging in there. Awesome. Well, we will keep praying for you all. I feel for you. And uh, so so yesterday was the non-traditional day, but we baked birthday cake and icing birthday cake, and we were cooking out on the grill. So um, I have done some YouTube videos on that, and I even think that I did a video on Facebook Live on cooking on the grill and turning it into a convection oven. Um, I have two of my heart-shaped rocks out there on top of the grill plates and you just stretch them out so that you can put the baking dish on either rock and you have space in the middle there and you have your outer burners on high and your inner burners on low and that creates a convection around your dish and enables you to bake. I put the uh, um, Bread pans up on the top racks of the grill, and that worked perfectly as well. But uh, we're going to have to make Christmas dinner that way, and um, it's like $255 for the part, so we'll just keep improvising for a while, and uh, Christmas dinner is going to be a little interesting, and baking cookies is probably going to be a little interesting, but they're going to get done on the grill. So you learn to adapt and overcome, right guys? And also have backups for your backups. So that's what we did. That's what we were doing yesterday. Um, what transpired over the last couple days here. Hi, Holly. Good morning. Um, I went to just a standard eye doctor appointment. You've probably seen me messing around with glasses lately, taking them on and off, wearing different ones. Um, 
we've, we've been putting it off because we couldn't afford to go to the eye doctor, but it was one of those where if we didn't go soon, everybody in the house's arms were going to start getting longer to help me see. So uh, we just went to a regular eye exam um, on Friday, and I, I just, it never occurred to me, um, oh, I will let him know. He's out shoveling. Thank you, Tammy. She said happy birthday to the Mountain Man Jr. That's hard for me to get used to saying. I've called him the Mountain Boy for so many years. Um, but we went to the eye doctor, and they had to put the drops in your eyes to dilate your pupils. And I have been to the eye doctor since my surgery, but I don't recall having had to put the drops in my eyes. And I, I really just didn't think anything of it. I was just so focused on getting a new prescription and getting in there and out of there. And they put the drops in my eyes and they put a lot in so you need to dab. And when I dabbed and saw that it was fluorescent yellow, that sent signals right away that there could potentially be a problem. And that was just the first set of drops. That's to numb the eye and then they put the drops in to dilate the eye. And I was fine the visit. We were there for quite a while because all three of us had appointments. And um, I was talking to uh, some of the other people there. So we were there for a little while. And uh, we, we headed home. And I had a headache. But I associated that with my pupils being dilated and wearing those really cool glasses they give you for the ride home. And it was really bright. And there was snow on the ground. So you have the reflection of the snow. So I just figured I had a headache as a result of my eyes being dilated. And then we had some errands to run in town and we came home. I made dinner. We ate. I was sitting watching a movie with the mountain boy and the mountain man was watching one of his trapping things on the chair across the room and sitting there and all of a sudden I could just feel my hands cracking open. Um, I have really dry skin. It was inherited. My dad has the same thing and um, when it gets cold my, my hands crack and often they'll crack on the lines on my hands. And, but what was really weird is my hands just got really hot and they started cracking open and I thought it was really strange and my body started getting really sore to the touch and I thought I was coming down with something because I was around sick people. So of course I, you know, did stuff, took stuff to, um, treat my body pre preventative things so that if there was something coming on that maybe I could, you know, catch it. Well, we went to bed, and I woke up the next morning, and that's when I realized I was lucky that I woke up. Um, what was happening to my hands is they were swelling. And um, the reason my body was so sore... Good morning, Brian. <laughs> Thank you for the prayers. <laughs> um, but my... The reason my, my body hurt to the touch was because it was starting to react to the chemicals and I was starting to get very inflamed. When I woke up in the morning, um, normally my rings just come right off my finger. I couldn't move them. And this one particularly, I could not, I couldn't, I couldn't budge it. And it was any tighter, I would have had to cut them off. And my face swelled up. Um, there's pictures on Facebook. And I'm very open about this and I share this because there are other people out there dealing with the same illness that I am and I want you to be aware of how toxic something as simple as eye drops can be. That fluorescent yellow um, is not something that is normal that the body receives on a normal basis so um, my immune system is impaired. Um, I will talk a little bit about the illness in a minute. Um, with this illness, the immune system gets taxed and impaired. It can either go that it doesn't stop anything from coming into the body or it stops everything. Meaning that on the one side you get sick all the time because your body's just not stopping. And on the opposite side, mine is stopping and it's fighting it, but I'm getting sick as a result of that also. And I have found ways to help myself through these sicknesses because... <sighs> Examples like Friday make me feel like I need to live in a bubble. And um, it's really frustrating at times because I can get sick from food. And that's why we don't eat anywhere else other than our home or um, maybe one or two other places, friends' homes that we know are safe because they accommodate my diet. 
Um, but other than that, if I'm out and I can't find food that is non-GMO, I will starve that or not eat that meal or not eat at that time rather than punish myself because I will be sick for three to four days if I eat anything that has toxins in it. So GMOs, pesticides, you know, so I am on a non-GMO organic from scratch diet and I have to be. But the other thing is I can get sick from airborne things. If I don't have lemongrass with me, I can get sick from the smell of diesel and gas, which never used to bother me. I can get sick from um, being in someone's home that had water damage and they have hidden mold. They don't need a mold meter, all they need is me. It, instantly, my face gets red up in here, my cheeks get real red, and then I'm sick for three to four days. Um, another part to my struggle is that I don't break down mold, heavy metals, um, there's another one, I just totally zoned. I just zoned. And I, and I may do that throughout the day because I am feeling better, but my head is still messed up. My head is really tight in here, and I just have weird pressure on the top of my head. But what happened with the drops is that I ended up going into um, anaph anaphylaxis. I didn't say that right, but you know what I mean. Um, I started to have an extreme allergic reaction. That is what my body ends up doing with toxins is I end up going to that level and what's really crazy is that they should have caused that 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 night but the buildup of toxins in my system and me not breaking them down right away and I knew there were metals in that because I woke up and my tongue was heavy and very metally and um, like I said I've become a good meter for a lot of things so I knew that there were metals in there, and I have a metal detox, so I started taking that. And um, I normally take uh, liquid bentonite clay and psyllium husk every day. And the reason I do that is it's a binder, and it binds the toxins. Now, I ran out of that, and I've been taking um, activated charcoal as I need it, because that kind of messes with my guts. So I don't take that on an everyday basis. Um, and I hadn't taken any of that. So had I had that in my system, I may not have reacted as badly because it would have bound those, those things that it didn't recognize and they wouldn't have reabsorbed. But what, re, what happened is these toxins were building up in my system. They were causing my body to build up in histamine and by Saturday night, I was starting to wheeze, swell further, and um, my tongue was getting heavy and swollen. So, anthralaxis was setting in. And I do have Benadryl, and many people, when I posted for prayer, were, I think, a little disturbed with me for not going to the ER. But I want you to think about something, for me, anyway. And if anybody else ever experiences this, please, please do not mess around. This is anaphylaxis. I cannot saying it right, right today, is something that you do not want to mess around with. You can die very easily. Your throat will close up. You will not be able to breathe. Um, I do have an EpiPen here. I do have Benadryl here. The ER is 30, 40 minutes from here. I could get there. But if I reacted that badly to eye drops, I have no idea what my body is going to do with an adrenaline shot. So I have learned through the many times this has happened to me how to go through the process and how to get the toxins, and my toxins out of my system, my body calmed. Now, um, these are some of the things that you should have on hand if you deal with these things. And I just noticed I don't have everything in there. Um, there's some oils missing. But I, I wrote a blog post on Saturday night. Um, I ended up sleeping upright because when you lay down, uh, you tend to swell more. So I slept upright in a, an outdoor chair in my living room by the fireplace. And I wasn't able to sleep right away. So I wrote, wrote a blog post about this experience and shared what I used. And I, I am going to refer you to that and share that with you on Friday when it goes live. But nettle and um, quercetin 
are really good for allergies. It's a good replacement for Benadryl. Um, I have a very huge herbal pantry with all loose herbs. I have a homeopathic pantry. I have um, an herbal pantry that are supplements. Um, I have been involved in natural medicine since I'm 14 and I have a very broad um, knowledge but I love to keep learning. There's always something new to learn and I have this stuff on hand. And um, it's also a part of our lifestyle because of where we live um, that we have these things on hand. Nettle tea is something that we drink all the time. Nettle is extremely good for the body. It's really good for allergies. So instantly when I started realizing what was going on with my body, um, Saturday morning, I started taking the nettle and the quernitin. I also did uh, nettle tea, milk thistle, and I did um, red clover also, just as an additive. Um, red clover is good for the blood, but uh, milk thistle is really good at cleaning the liver, helping the liver to cleanse, and when you have all these toxins coming in your body, your liver starts to get really taxed. So that was something that um, I instantly started taking. I also took the activated charcoal and got that in my system. I started drinking a lot of fluids and I started using essential oils. Um, peppermint, lavender, and lemongrass across your um, breastplate is uh, really good at helping to relieve allergies. Um, those three together can be used um, I don't want to say in lieu of an EpiPen, but if you don't have an EpiPen, that is what you can use across your um, breast bone. And I use lavender across my, um, up above my eyebrows because, and down the bridge of my nose, because my eyes were just so messed up. Um, they were really uh, thick, watery. I had a lot of inflammation in my face, as you saw in the picture. So the lavender, the birthday man. Are you not going to say hello? Ah. <laughs> Tammy said happy belated birthday to you. Thanks. <laughs> he was out shoveling some snow. Sorry about that. Um, with my eyes and my face being swelled, the lavender is really good um, if you ever get pink eye. Doing the same thing across the bridge of the nose and above the eyebrows will help get rid of pink eye very quickly. Usually the drops at the doctor's office gives takes up to 10 days and um, the oils can take within a day or two and it'll be gone. Yes? Oh, I thought you were going to say something. So I started that regimen and I started drinking a lot. Um, I drank, I think, 94 ounces of liquid on Saturday and I was pushing the teas, drinking the teas. I also took milk thistle supplements and um, for those of you that have Lyme disease or know somebody that has Lyme disease, mold toxicity, or is detoxing um, heavy metals or struggling with anything that they're detoxing from, one of the things that's always missing in a detox is a binder. And the reason I say that is because what was happening Saturday for me is the toxins were starting to reabsorb in the system and they were just it was just an excessive buildup. So I also started taking um, holy basil and olive leaf tea, um, which helps bring the histamine levels down. But the binders, the, a binder is a thing that's going to help you absorb the toxins and keep them from reabsorbing in your system and getting the garbage out. So the one that, like I said, I always use is the bentonite clay and the psyllium husk. There are links for those below. But something else that you need to know is there's a couple other things you can use um, that work really well, and that's the activated charcoal. Um, but keep in mind, if you're taking any of these, you need to drink a lot of liquid. I struggle with drinking water unless I am, like, um, really overheated. Um, I, I don't go directly to water. So I have to force myself to drink a lot of liquids. And it's really important. Coffee is a dehydrator, so remember that if you're a coffee drinker. Um, it's important to drink a lot of fluids to help these binders um, not get you constipated. Um, but the activated charcoal is um, great. There's also something called Enerose Gel. And I 
have it mentioned below, but I did not put a link. The link will be in my uh, blog post. And then if you are on cholesterol medicine and you are taking cholesterol powder, um, cholestro cholestyramine is what it is, um, they use that. There's a doctor down south that uses that for Lyme disease um, to bind the Lyme and the mold toxins down south. And um, that works really good in um, binding the toxins. So if you have that on hand, that's something that you can use also. Hello, Pamela. Pamela says, happiest birthday wishes to my one and only favorite, fantastic, super fly, beautiful, and most... <laughs> Ted. <laughs> And Holly says, can you add lemon to your water? Oh, absolutely. Yes, lemon is actually a great detoxifier as well. And if it helps you to drink the water, yes, 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 yes. Um, I actually just found some packets of non-GMO, um, very high vitamin uh, packets for additives for water. To add flavor I'm checking into those and I will let you know on those because I do struggle but I can't do any of the packets they have on the market now because they have too much garbage in them that would make me sick so um, but yes lemon essential oil a drop of lemon essential oil and remember if you're ingesting essential oils you have to be extremely careful you don't want to overdo it but an eight ounce glass with a drop of uh, lemon essential oil is great or you can use the lemon itself a fresh lemon is so 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 good for your system absolutely girl so having these things on hand and knowing what you can use um, I found that I started to have a histamine struggle early on um, before I was diagnosed with my illness and since then I do have struggles where I can feel histamine building up my chest will get tight and I'll get wheezy so having holy basil and olive leaf teas on hand um, and keeping in mind and learning um, what foods you might be eating that are high in histamine. Believe it or not, spinach is high in histamine. I used to eat a lot of spinach. So when you learn, if you have histamine issues, learning what you're eating and what you could adjust in your diet is huge. And also just the simple thing is teas um, or even those supplements to help get your um, histamine levels in your body lowered. Now, I did take um, Benadryl later in the night um, Saturday night just because it was a little alarming um, once you start wheezing and things are getting really tight you, do, you don't want to mess around with any of this but um, the fear of going to the ER and knowing that if they start injecting me with other things there's a good chance that th I will end up worse off than when I got there so I'm just learning what my body needs and what my body um, does in these situations and learning how to care for it on my own is really really helpful and um, because I have these reactions to things I carry the essential oils with me all the time I also carry magnesium oil with me and magnesium oil is something else that I used um, magnesium oil when sprayed on the body will help loosen muscles and I had problems before where my neck muscles and my throat muscles were tightening randomly when they felt like it and it was a very alarming feeling um, I knew how to release those muscles but at the same time if they wouldn't release um, I didn't know what to do and a dear friend of mine um, Suzanne and Denzel shared with me uh, on using magnesium oil spray and that really helped a lot in releasing those muscles so when you're getting tight if you can um, utilize the magnesium oil also that helps release those muscles so you know I put a lot into my body but it was all natural things good morning Helen and it's really important to know what you can utilize and also what to have on hand and um, you know, I, I had allergies as a kid, but I've never reacted to things as I do now. And something as simple as an eye drop, I mean, it was just kind of, we were all left with our mouths hanging open um, just because I just didn't, I didn't think about that. It wasn't something that I had to be concerned about before. Um, when I go to the dentist or if I have to go to the doctor for anything, you know, I prepare. Um, when I went to the dentist after I had my surgery, I had all my metal fillings taken out. 
and I did a metal cleanse prior. I did all my binders. I had a deep muscle therapy appointment scheduled directly following my dental appointment to help my body flush. You know, I really took these things into consideration, but the eye doctor was just something that I just never considered. So, hello, Amy. So something else that I did as well, um, Sunday morning I woke up and I was still swollen. So what I did was I used an ionic foot bath, which pulls the toxins out of your feet. I did that twice. Um, that's about a half hour treatment each. And then I have something called a harmonic quad. A harmonic quad is a positive and negative um, unit and uh, you hold the positive in your left hand, negative in your right hand, and you put a wet cloth around the rods and you turn it on. Austin, can you grab me the harmonic quad? Because they're probably going to picture this like really Frankenstein. It's right here at the edge of the table. Um, it What it does is it pulses the body with positive and negative currents and it doesn't hurt you don't feel it but it actually is strong enough to kill cancer cells Lyme cells and it sounds really scary but it's really just this little unit right here you plug it in and here are the really flexible cables and you just plug them into these little steel pieces so you don't feel the currents going through you or anything. It's nothing, you know, like I am a science project or anything, although I feel like one lately. Um, but this is amazing. And um, without these pieces on the end, and this is going to sound scary because you don't mix electric and water, but these go into a foot bath. And um, this does not touch the water. It goes into a, a a port on the outside and touches has a metal bolt on the inside so I'm not getting electrocuted there isn't a chance of electrocution but I do a foot bath with that and it pulls the toxins and kills toxins and binds toxins and I did two of those treatments as well so by doing all these things I am on the mend I am feeling better good morning candy oh good I'm glad you like the fatwood and and thank you for sending me a hello <laughs> um, but yes, so doing these treatments and knowing what to do. Now this unit right here you saw, it's little, but it costs like $350. I had to buy that when I had my surgery because that was part of a treatment that I had to do on a daily basis and I still do it on a weekly basis um, just to help my body heal. Now, this is going to sound really bizarre, but I was pushing a lot of toxins, I was doing a lot of treatments, and then I started feeling better, and then I started pushing silicone. So for those of you ladies that are out there that are listening that um, have the same illness as I do, um, you that's a good thing that you're pushing the silicone. And I did not include the link in, in this, but I will put it in later. I use a soak in the bathtub. Um, it's a nettle soak. And it's a sticky soak, and what it does is it pulls the silicone from the body. So when you are pushing silicone, you want to soak, especially soak in that treatment because it will pull excess silicone out of the body. I do not have any right now. Um, it's like $35 a bottle, so it is costly, but you get like, I think like four soaks out of a bottle. But that is something else for those of you with the same illness. That is something that you should be doing because when you're pushing toxins like this, there's a good chance you're going to stir up the silicone. And that's good. You want that to come out of the body. And it's really bizarre. You start itching. I'll get itchy on my back and then it'll feel like little shards of glass are coming out of my skin. It is, it is creepy, but it's also healing. I know I'm healing. Um... Uh, the harmonic quad, I believe, is what Holly's asking about and where you get one, and it is precisionherbs.com, and I will put the link for that in, and I will also include that in my post as well, Holly, but it's a great item um, to have on hand, and it's not just for somebody with this illness. It's a great way, when you feel a cold coming on, you can actually utilize this, and it'll help with that as well. So it is a really great item to have on hand. Um, these foot soaks and things, these are important to have on hand. Um, help you to heal, uh, detoxify the body, detoxify the liver. Um, they're great homeopathic things to utilize on your homestead. 
Um, two other things that are really important to have on your homestead just for the common colds and for the unexpected is a neti pot, which you use for your sinuses to clear your sinuses, as well as a hot water bottle. Those are just really good things to have on hand. But I will share more on that. I want to go a little bit into um, my illness. Uh, many of you know um, I was I had life-saving surgery in 2016. Um, in my younger days, I had lumpectomies um, on my right side, and it had made a considerable difference, and the doctor encouraged... Uh, implants so I chose to do so and I am a huge advocate now um, because God saved me God used me as a vessel to help and save lives because I'm still here and I progressively started getting sick uh, we moved out here in 2010 and I just started to have all kinds of issues once we were out here and now looking back I can see the issues going back so much further um, but I just didn't understand what they were or recognize them or relate them to um, breast implants but the thing is guys men and women it's not just breast implants that you have to worry about it's anything silicone in the body so if you have hernia mesh in your body that is silicone you have an IUD you have um, uh, ports in the body for varying medicines, chemo, that is silicone, um, your body is likely going to fight that and you are going to have issues with that in your future. So um, it's not just breast implants, it's anything silicone in the body and some people are able to break down metals and break down mold. I don't. They stay stuck in my system and they make me extremely sick. So. I had saline implants. The outer was silicone, and um, they say they're safe, but the outer silicone is made up with platinum and titanium and a lot of other heavy metals. The body recognizes that as a foreign object, so in essence, my body was fighting it. Some people can get away with having them and they don't get sick. But there are a lot of really, really, really sick people out there right now, and they uh, either wish they were dead or feel like they're dying or fearing they are dying, have no idea why, have no idea how to get help because the medical doctors and our Western medicine just laughs at them. Mountain Man and I went to the doctor a year before my surgery. I could not sit straight. My entire abdomen was swelled up. Easy killer. <laughs> my abdomen was all swelled up. My organs were all swelled up. I ended up with a hiatal hernia because I, my body had nowhere else to go with things. It was a mess. And I had all kinds of other things going on. We explained all this to the doctor. She put me through a ton of regimens. And she laughed at me and said I was full of poo. For real. Because I was constipated. But she ignored all the other symptoms that I was explaining and all the other struggles and I knew right there at that point that in order to figure out what was going on I had to keep self-diagnosing myself and guys it was a good thing that I do self-diagnose and I am willing to work with my body and be in tune with my body because if I had not been treating my adrenals my liver my kidneys um, I wouldn't be here today I, I, I wouldn't be here today. My organs were shutting down when I got to Georgia for my surgery in 2016. So um, when I went to the doctor and was laughed at, that was January of 2015. Um, finally, in, in October of 2015, my body just couldn't take it anymore. And um, I got really sick. I got neuropathy. I couldn't walk. I couldn't sit. I could only lay. Um, I used to, you know, hike. I'm used to hiking three to five miles a day now, and we go for a hike for 21 miles in a day. I couldn't even walk a quarter of a mile without the mountain man's assistance. I couldn't hold a full conversation. I could not speak in sentences because by the time I opened my mouth to answer somebody's question, the thought 
process was totally gone. I had no idea what I was even talking about anymore. The um, toxins were so built up in my system that they were affecting my brain. The metals were affecting my brain. And it was really scary. And I've told you guys before, I believe, that God diagnosed me. And that's how many of the women that are being treated today are being diagnosed. Because it's through their faith and their uh, determination to figure out what's going on with them that God opens doors and shows them what what is going on. But the ionic foot bath is what diagnosed me, basically. God nudged me to purchase that. I just felt like I was being nudged to purchase that to pull the toxins out and when I got it it said that if you have implants of any kind you can't use it and I had used them many times in my past but it was prior to and uh, I did a search on Google and the t first thing that came up was breast implant illness and it was like a big neon sign and I said to the mountain man I know I know what's going on with me and and then a day later, God woke me up at like 1.20 in the morning and was filling my head with things to search. And the more I searched, the more I found the same doctor. And uh, that was the Dr. Kolb down in Georgia that I went to for my surgery. So, you know, those of you of faith understand how God can direct you. And I am very grateful and I am here as a result of it. And that is why I'm an advocate. In the description below is a list of symptoms of silicone poisoning and breast implant illness. So if you know somebody that has a silicone device in their body and they are sick or they have breast implants or they are thinking about getting them, please direct them to me and to my materials because God made us beautifully and wonderfully as we are and I I just hate to see somebody make the mistake in their life. And there are women out there that have mastectomies and that also um, have been burned and have different circumstances. And um, I had a woman reach out to me and, and ask me what, what, what should she do because she doesn't want to look like a boy. And, and I totally get that. Um, and she, she had a, a double mastectomy. And so for those of you that are out there that are in that position, they are doing fat implants. Um, I had that opportunity, but after being as sick as I was, um, I am very happy in my own skin for the first time in my life, and that's sad. And that's why I'm trying to teach others to be happy with who you are. Um, our society today teaches such wrong things about the body and our self-esteem and, you know, we need to be happy with who we are and not worry about what other people think or what society coins the perfect body. Because those Barbie dolls that are out there, you know, they're not healthy and they're probably not happy either. So, you know, we need to learn what gives us happiness and we need to look in the mirror and be happy with who we are and as we are. And, but, in regard to women that have to go through a mastectomy, I just I was too I was so sick. I, I just didn't I didn't want to do anything more to my body. I wanted God to heal me and I wanted to be able to be a vessel to help others. So for you ladies that have been burned or have had mastectomies, they are doing fat tramp transplants and it is a uh, safe op option. But please do not do silicone implants of any kind. I was sitting next to a woman in the waiting room who had full silicone implants and when she'd sneeze blue silicone would come out. Guys, it's it's really something to be scared of and it's really something to be fearful of and our medical um, world makes it sound so wonderful and oh they're so safe but these same doctors that are putting them in are not willing to accept the fact that they're also killing people and that they're destroying lives. Um, there was a woman who was a painter and was a, a very prestigious painter and she lost her eyesight and her hearing because another part of this illness is that it leaves the body susceptible to parasites because the body will not, the immune system is impaired so the body will not attack everything that it needs to it starts to get confused is basically what happens 
she had parasites that were coming out of her eyes and her ears. I know this sounds gross. I read this and I was just, uh, she went to 50 doctors and they wanted to put her on medication because they thought she was nuts. She'd even bring samples in a little vial of what came out of her and they refused to acknowledge her and acknowledge her struggle until she found Dr. Kolb. And it just saddens me. And the reason I mentioned her is because she no longer can see to paint. She can't even lift her hands and use her fingers. I am so blessed to, you know, I have struggles and I may have struggles for the rest of my life. I'm learning my struggles. Um, as much as I like to say I'm learning my struggles, new ones come up all the time. But I have a po positive mindset when they set in. And I work very positively to work through them, keeping my body calm, breathing deeply, and trying to, that was another part of this weekend, was when I was not feeling well and I was starting to wheeze, was to breathe and just keep that oxygen, deep breaths coming into my body. The other thing was I went outside. I went outside, I spent time with the mountain man outside in the cold. The cold will um, reduce swelling, and, and then I took, a quick hot shower but my ending of my shower was a cold shower and um, I've been practicing that over the last month um, because cold showers are really good for the body it's not it's something you have to work yourself into um, I can now turn the cold water on and it doesn't phase me but in the beginning I can't say that that was the case I love you too sweet Holly and I'm using my voice, you know, there have been people that have had negative things to say about my uh, illness and my surgery and things, but you know, society looks at people that have breast implants as um, probably as, as strippers or as, you know, that, that they, were, they were going after them with the wrong mindset, and there's a lot of people that have them, um, you know, uh, I can't think of the word it'll come to me but you know everybody everybody goes through different phases of our lives everybody goes through different things our medical system recommends things um, I see that all the time where there are things that are recommended and people don't think twice about it um, where I have come to a very different place in my life where when things are recommended to me I don't react on that immediately whatsoever um, it's important to understand that regardless why somebody has a an, an an implant that it is it makes them no less of a person it makes them no different of a person and when they are this sick there are so many sick sick people out there that just don't know what is going on um, the list is huge I'll I'll read over Fatigue or chronic fatigue, con uh, cognitive dysfunction, brain fog, which is a huge one, difficulty concentrating, memory loss. If it wouldn't have been for Evernote, I would not have been able to remember anything. Muscle pain and weakness, joint pain, hair loss, dry skin and poor, um, uh, poor sleep and insomnia, dry eyes, decline in vision. My vision, uh, last my last prescription was 1.25 for my my reading vision I'm now at 2.25 and it's only been a year so even though um, I have had the surgery and and I'm detoxing like a queen I'm you know my body is still fighting and that's something that everybody needs to know is that once you have removed them from the body uh, you still got all that garbage in there and if you are not on a detox protocol you need to be I have a um, FAQ page that is going to be going up on my website that will lead you to um, a detox or to types of doctors if you do not have such a thing. Good morning, Roxy. And um, it's just really important that they are removed properly also. This is something that I, I can't express enough. If you know somebody that, is, that has them, just removing them is not enough. The entire capsule around them needs to be removed or all of those toxins will remain in the body and they will continue to stay sick. So it is really important that they find a proper doctor. Um, I, I lost connection with family members because they were upset on how I um, 
decided to handle things. They wanted me to go quickly to um, doctors nearby and in Washington or, uh, you know, in the bigger cities in Idaho. And none of them had a detox protocol in place. And I knew that God was leading me to Dr. Kolb in Georgia. And it's because she experienced it herself. She has a protocol in place. And God has gifted her with an incredible ability to heal. So had I gone to one of the doctors here, they wouldn't have removed them properly. I actually checked. And they don't remove them properly. You have to specifically find a doctor that is removing the capsules and doing the, um, uh, I'm sorry, my brain is still not with me fully after this weekend. So um, again, check out my FAQs on the website that will be out there uh, next week and Friday, my blog post on how to um, help yourself if you are experiencing anthralaxis will be out and you'll find all the descriptions and, and uh, information in there. But I mean, just going over some of these, this list, I mean, the system gets so messed up. So there are, um, under my health category on our website, there is a uh, informational um, on breast implant illness, and there's a lot of different posts there. So if you know somebody, I will, I will, um, I also shared one on Facebook this past weekend. Um, please share it with everybody that you know, um, because in that post it also talks about the other silicone devices and things that could be causing these same issues for other people. So it's not just limited to women. It is any foreign object in the body that the body will start to fight. But silicone is not safe. Silicone is not just silicone. It's loaded with heavy metals. Um, it, is, it is nasty, nasty stuff. So, the list for all the side effects, as I started, decline in vision, vision disturbances, hypo and hyperthyroidism, uh, hypo and hyperadrenal symptoms, estrogen and progesterone imbalance or diminishing hormones, slow healing of cuts and scrapes, easy bruising, throat clearing, coughing, difficulty swallowing, choking reflux, vertigo, gastrointestinal and digestion digestive issues, fevers, night sweats, um, intolerant to heat, new and persistent bacterial and viral infections, slow clearing of common colds and flus, fungal infections, yeast infections, candida, sinus infections, skin rashes, ear ringing, sudden food intolerance, allergies and headaches, slow muscle recovery after activity, heart palpitations, changes in normal heart rate or pain, um, heart pain, Sore and aching joints um, of the shoulders, hips, backbone, hands, feet, swollen and, and tender lymph nodes in the breast area, underarm, throat, neck, and groin. Bouts of dehydration. That's another thing. Um, silicone causes dehydration. So no matter what I was drinking, I was always dehydrated. It is just so then none of my organs could work. My organs were already taxed. So it's just this deadly hot mess. And that's why I'm talking about it, because the women that reach out to me, nobody believes them. They think they're hypochondriacs. They are, you know, trying to explain to people all these weird things they have going on, and everybody thinks they're nuts. Uh, the biggest thing was just constant tiredness and just unable to, to function. And I just, I, I feel that God has brought me through this to be a voice. You know, I could, I, I just... It's not my personality to be quiet about this. Um, I really feel I need to help people because I know how much I was guessing and I know how much I was catering to my body and I know how many other people out there are hurting and they don't know how to cater to their body. And the other sad thing that I've seen is that there have been women who have been cured of cancer and have healed of cancer and they're dying of silicone poisoning because of the ports. So. It is just, it's just scary. On um, the one particular instance, she had a port put in in her spine. They put it in so that they could do all her treatments, but they never informed her that it could never be removed because it's in such a touchy spot in the spine that it can't be removed. So it's just, it's sad, and I want people to be aware. So spread the word. And for these young girls, um, you know, 
I, I haven't had TV in 10 years, but when we were in Georgia, you know, we were in a hotel room, that's all there was to do, and I was pretty much out of it anyway. But the commercials and the, and the TV shows that are out there today, you know, and, and what, what these kids go through in school, the bullying and having to fit in, it just saddens me because everybody's trying to seek something to feel better and I just hate to see women and young girls making this poor choice and, and suffering because my life will be different, my life will never be the same as it was, but I am bent on making sure that I get as full of capabilities back as possible and I want to be able to to be a light to others and ex and share what I've experienced. That's why it was so important for me to share about the eye drop, something so simple as an eye drop. That's why, you know, people are like, go to the ER. If you're not feeling good, go to the ER, go to the doctor. But, you know, as soon as you go to the ER or the doctor, the first thing they're wanting to do is pump you with medic medicines. And if they can't figure out what's going on with you, they want to give you a prescription. Those things are toxic to me. And, and I'm sure that they will be to others that are following behind me and that are ahead of me. And, you know, these are things that people just don't think about. And um, knowing how toxic the, the GMO foods are for me, one of the things that I try to point out with that too is they're toxic for you too. You may have aches and pains. You may not sleep well. Uh, you, you may have you know struggles and you're not associating it with the food that you're eating but if you were to clean out your your pantry right now and fill it with all non-gmo foods and you were to start eating all non-gmo foods and then you went back and you had something with gmos in it you would get sick like i do what's happening is our bodies are getting so used to the garbage and the toxins that they just keep fighting it and fighting it and fighting it and they get other sicknesses setting in and other aches and pains setting in and nobody associates it with our food or our medications. There's a lot of people that are on a lot of medications and they don't realize that those medications are what are causing their other issues. So it's really compounded and it's really scary for me because my eyes have been wide open to it and, and I know how sensitive my body has become but I also know how much my body is healing and how things that used to affect me don't affect me anymore. Like, I spent my whole life always having, like, in the summertime, having swollen feet and ankles. And, you know, everybody would say it's salt. It's not salt. Um, unless you're doing a lot of the Morton salt. Morton salt is basically gasoline. It is not, or petroleum. It's not, it's not salt. But if you're eating Himalayan salts and Celtic salts and healthy salts, your body's not swelling from that. Your body is inflamed from the foods you're eating. Now that I am eating non-GMO foods, completely non-GMO foods, I don't, my ankles don't swell at all anymore. And, you know, I used to think that was hereditary because my mom had that. But I'm realizing now that these things are as a result of our food and what we're putting in and on our bodies. So... You know, I want to encourage you today, even if silicone toxicity isn't something that affects you directly, I want you to consider heavily what you are putting in and on your body. Because I can get just as deathly sick from shampoo and soap as I can from those eye drops. And it's because what's in this stuff. So when you start really paying attention to the labeling and you start making your own things and you start really going clean, you will start to get so healthy. And, and I encourage you guys to do it because you're a step ahead of me. You don't have all this um, silicone toxicity going on and the heavy metals and, and mold issues. You don't have all that going on, but you have the ability right now to make a decision to start a new beginning in the new year and start paying attention to what you're eating and what you're putting in your body and what's being prescribed to you. You know, bef when my son was little and they were diagnosing him, they wanted to put him on medication and I refused, um, knowing that some of those medications can never be weaned off of and what that would do to his system lifelong. And 
so forth. So it's really important for us to do our due diligence because a lot of times, you know, with him, what they were prescribing to him, I could replace with herbs and essential oils and they will help him and they will not just help him with the things they want to help him with, but they'll help him overall because those oils and those herbs have the ability, many of them, to help different things and strengthen the body and get the body to a point where it won't even need those things because it has self-healed itself. And that is what I am on the mission to do. Um, I am learning how my positive thinking is helping me to heal. I am learning how breathing and focusing my mind is a, a great way to heal as well. That we have so much more control over our mind and our body than we realize. And then we're... And it's quite amazing and I'm going to share that journey with you this year because I'm really delving into that and I'm really seeing great results. The other thing guys is the power of prayer. God has healed me in so many different ways over this last three year period. I shared last week how when I was laying in bed and before my surgery and had such heat going through my body and God removed the heat that was there for three years and it never came back and how he touched my hand and um, that hiatal hernia that is incurable that I got as a result of my organs all being so swelled up. By the way, they were swelled like that for over a year before I was finally able to detox and remove all of that inflammation and heal my guts and my organs. And God healed my hiatal hernia. Um, it was uh, kind of out of an anger and angered place. Um, I I do a lot of enemas as well for my healing. Coffee enemas and regular enemas are really good for healing and that is something that I could have done this weekend but the last time I did it I um, irritated the hiatal hernia and so I'm trying to heal myself one way and I'm you know affecting myself in another and I was really kind of aggravated because this has been a long process and it's a constant process of constant healing and constantly tending to the body and paying attention and being careful what I'm putting myself into as far as environment as well as um, just everything and I was angry and you know I, I prayed to God in anger and I you know he, he's our father he'll listen to us regardless what state we're in um, but I, I wanted that gone because it was limiting me so much here. I couldn't lift anything. I, I couldn't do the enemas real successfully and they're a big part of my healing. And, um, under my rib cage, I have felt, um, I don't, I don't know if it's scar tissue or what it was, but it was, uh, just hindering my workouts. It was in my way it was bothering me it was uncomfortable and it was all part of the hiatal hernia and when I prayed um, I felt something and my abs have been very different ever since and I don't have the results or the reactions of the hiatal hernia anymore so you know I am trusting God for my healing I am trusting God to lead me and guide me and I am trusting God to always give me the right words in sharing this with you guys because Guys, this is important stuff. You know, we have to be our biggest advocate, our biggest advocate when it comes to everything, our food, our medical. And, you know, Eastern medicine has been a practice for forever. Um, there are certain aspects of Eastern medicine that um, go against my Christian beliefs, but the herbs themselves and the plants I truly believe God put on this planet he did he put those plants on the planet for us they're all within reach of us they're all there to help us heal and to uh, treat ourselves and they're natural it's what the body is able to accept rather than these chemicals and you know don't get me wrong there is a time and a place for Western medicine and I really want to point it out again what I talked about today is what works for me when you have anaphylaxis it is not something you want to mess around with it is not something you want to play with um, it is it is 
important that you get yourself treated if you don't know if, if you have access to medical attention please make sure you get medical attention what I shared with you today was in the event that there is no medical facilities available you are struggling you need to care for yourself this is a way you can care for yourself if there is nothing else available this is what works for me I am not a doctor I am a mom a homesteader an off-gridder uh, passionate about Jesus I'm not a doctor but this is what works for me this is what I have done my due diligence and I've done my research over and over again and, and continue to research because knowledge is power guys and what we learn and what we are willing to educate ourselves on can be life-saving whether for us or for a family member and that's why I'm sharing this today because it's really important that you know the things that you can utilize, the things that you can have on hand if you have certain conditions. And like I said, you know, if you go to the doctor and they're prescribing all kinds of things, before you start taking those things, do your research and see what else you could do to help yourself with the same thing. Um, I have yet to utilize anything natural that hasn't gotten rid of whatever the ailment was very quickly compared to the over-the-counter or the prescription drug that takes seven to ten plus days and those chemicals get stuck in our bodies and then cause us to get sick in other ways so there's a lot of natural things out there that we can utilize that are less harsh on the body less expensive and um, oftentimes will cure the this, this situation rather than just uh, catering to it and, and um, leaving it there and just hiding the symptoms. So I hope this all makes sense. Like I said, I'm a little foggy yet. Um, when those things set in, it really messes with my head because my face gets swollen, my, my head gets swollen. Um, something else I just thought of that I took is Ellen Campen and I will put it um, like I said my blog post has it all in I was trying to quickly throw this together this morning because I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to pull this all off with how I was feeling um, but the Ellen Campen uh, when your sinuses get really clogged one of the other struggles I had greatly was that the bacterias and the funguses and and things were in all in my um, sinus cavities I had spots that looked like I might have skin cancer when I was um, first diagnosed and then after my surgery and it took probably eight months till those skin marks started to go away but I had a lot of pain I had extreme pain right in here and up in here and sometimes down in here and they would pop and I knew it was my sinuses but I didn't know how to fix them and the elecampin was really good it it dries up the sinuses it gets rid of all the mucus because what was really crazy is my sinuses were dry but I'd wake up and I'd be gagging on mucus and uh, right now with the season that we're in with all the sinus infections and colds Ellen Campen will draw out the mucus and get rid of the mucus and keep you from choking on it so it's a good thing to have on hand and the other thing was a sinus um, spray that I utilized in corporation with that and it has essential oils in it and uh, that sinus spray was amazing in helping to clear everything in here and I was also utilizing a lot of topical essential oils and different things to try to um, get rid of the bacteria. I had bacteria and such all over my body. Um, something that I didn't explain was um, why the saline uh, implants were so toxic for me the saline implants uh, leak the valves leak so what happens is when they leak um, fluids go in there and start to form bacteria and mold and fungus and biotoxins my body doesn't break down mold so I was starting to house some of the worst biotoxins and funguses and molds internally they were also external on the on the implants and anytime somebody would give me a hug it would be like releasing all of those poisons into my body and it was really strange because I thought that when I would go to church my biggest struggle was holding a conversation and talking to people and I come home and I'd be so sick and so depleted and so overwhelmed 
And part of the sickness was because I'm a hugger and I hug people. And every time I hug somebody, I was poisoning myself. And it's really scary because they, you know, they say that the silicone, solid silicone implants are worse than the saline and I would plead to differ with that because if your body is not breaking down all those things and you are breeding them, it's really, really dangerous. So it's a really toxic mess when the body has anything foreign implanted into it. And like I said, it is my duty as a human to share my my voice, my knowledge, and, and that with as many people as I can. So I ask you guys to please help me spread the word and help me get the word out about um, breast implant illness and silicone toxicity and all this, the, the things that can affect you um, after, after being diagnosed. Something as simple as an eye drop can set you back for five days. So it's really important that you know of these things and that you're aware of these things. And also, like I said, that you know what you can have on hand in your home to help you with situations that, you know, may occur. I have stuff on hand. The big joke here is that I have something for everything or I have something for that. And I, I try to. I try to be certain that we have things on hand for the things that are concerns for us, but also for things that could be concerns for us. And just being healthy and going at life in a healthy way has helped us greatly. You know, we were at the eye doctor and he said, who is your family physician? We don't have one in Idaho. We haven't had to go to the doctor since we're here. And it is good to have checkups and, you know, get your blood tested. And I've had my blood tested multiple times. The mountain man has had his his blood tested you know so it is important to have regular checkups but we don't have a reason to go to the doctor if, if we don't have a reason to go to the doctor we don't go and so we don't we don't have a medical doctor out here I mean we know where we would go if we had to um, but we haven't had the need and when you're when you're really conscious of how you live what you're putting in and on your body you eliminate a lot of that need and it's just important to know that. But like I said, there is a definite place for Western medicine. I don't want to short that. It's just saddening to see where our medical world is and how they put more value on the almighty dollar. Um, with you know, it took it took years before the FDA was willing to put a warning out on breast implants and that was through a huge huge fight on the behalf of all of us that have experienced near death as a result of them and there they had a huge group of women that had uh, stood up to have them put back on the market and you know most of those women are dead so they don't belong on the market and the word needs to get out there of how toxic and dangerous they are. And hopefully you'll help me spread the word. And I really appreciate you guys. Your prayers are huge. And um, I hope you gained something from this today. I hope this was helpful. Um, my biggest thing is just trying to alert the, the women and men that are affected by uh, silicone toxicity to just let them know that something as simple as eyedrops can uh, be very toxic to them. So, do you guys have questions? Um, and, and like I said, share this video. If you feel that it will be helpful to somebody, please share this video. I have a blog post that I posted on our Treyer Wilderness page this weekend about uh, the deadly uh, breast implant illness and the silicone toxicity. If you could help me share that, I would greatly appreciate it. And like I said, Friday I'm going to put my post out on uh, what I went through this past weekend and all the things that I utilized. Um, if you know people that have a lot of struggles with uh, anaphylaxis, that they can start keeping those things on hand. Um, they're easy, simple things to have on hand that can make such a world of difference. So, guys, I've taken enough of your time today. I will see you next Wednesday again at 10.30 Pacific Time. Sorry I was late today. I was excited to be out in the trap line with my man and to enjoy the snow. Um, but 
if you guys have prayers, there is also a huge prayer list down below. And I'm sorry that I was scattered today and that I'm a little off. But uh, like I said, it affects my head when I get like this. So, But the huge prayer list below, I would really appreciate all you prayer warriors lifting them in prayer. And if you need prayer, please don't hesitate to list it in the comments below or email me or private message me. And uh, I'm really excited for the new year, guys. It's going to be a new beginning for us all. And um, if you haven't gone to our YouTube channel lately, The Mountain Man is doing a lot of trapping uh, videos. He is back. We are going to try to do a lot more on our YouTube channel on a regular basis. So definitely go over there and check it out. And um, I just wish you guys a really good rest of your week. I'm going to say a prayer here. Dear Jesus, I just thank you today for my life and for all that you've taught me and shared with me and for just giving me the voice to help others and always giving me the right words. And dear Jesus, I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around our audience today. Just uh, be with those that are in need of healing and lifting and just uh, help all those in need and just be with them, Lord. This is a hard time of year for many people. Just give them the courage to embrace it and, and, and just help me to reach others on your behalf as well as just help me to reach others that are dealing with illness. And Lord, just be with everyone and just give them the strength and courage to um, be who they are and be proud of who they are. Be proud of how they are made and just uh, help them to feel that they are beautifully and wonderfully made. And when they look in the mirror to be happy with who they see and not to worry about what society says or what others are saying. What matters most is what you think of us and, and what we feel of ourselves. And being strong in ourselves is so important. And Lord, I just ask that you give everyone a good, healthy, safe rest of their week and just be with everyone and just bless them for taking the time to join me and for all their prayers. And Lord, I just ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, so like I said, I've kept you long enough today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for listening in and uh, for educating yourself on this and just help me spread the word if you would. And if you ever have questions, um, for those of you watching afterwards, if you have questions, um, please don't hesitate to ask. There is never a dumb question in my eyes. If you don't ask, you'll never know. So thank you guys. Have a good rest of your week. I'll be praying for you all and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Love you guys. God bless.